Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So please check the link in the description or click the join button below for more details. My name is Sava, and today we are continuing to discuss machine learning applications, and we are moving one step towards the more advanced models. In one of our previous videos, we have discussed the least absolute shrinkage selection operator, or lasso, and today we are looking at a generalization of that. And this uh, optimization technique, or machine learning regression technique, is called the elastic net, or E-net for short. The elastic net can be, as usual, distinguished from the OLS regression technique and from the lasso technique uh, by its loss function. The OLS regression has its loss function defined quite simply in terms of the sum of squared errors or sum of squared deviations from the uh, observed value of your forecast, your prediction, or your expected value, whereas um, some other more advanced models have additional terms added to it. In particular, the lasso and elastic net models add penalty terms to your sum of squared errors that is represented by absolute or absolute squared coefficients of the model. The logic of this particular approach in lasso and elastic net is that the model that you are estimating might first be suffering from multicollinearity, especially if there are a lot of candidate factors included into the model. Some of them might be correlated with each other, and therefore the coefficients for those could be shooting up and down in opposite directions. And also, it is a very useful technique to set some of the coefficients to zero of very small values, so that you can understand they are not as important as the ones that are left remaining, and you could simplify your model by excluding those coefficients that are set to zero of very small values by lasso or elastic net. However, elastic net is a generalization of a lasso and to some extent an improvement over it, as lasso is shown to set coefficients to zero quite a bit too often. The lasso penalty term can be represented as lambda, which is the penalty parameter. The higher it is, the more we care about the absolute values of our coefficients, times the sum of these coefficients. So that would be the selected uh, bit, the lasso penalty term. However, it can be generalized so that we combine this lasso penalty term multiplied by some uh, constant alpha that is between 0 and 1, so a, a combination of lasso penalty term with a squared coefficient penalty term over here that is multiplied by 1 minus alpha. So we are adjusting, we're additionally penalizing our model by lambda times alpha times the sum of absolute coefficients, and 1 minus alpha times the sum of the squared coefficients. This uh, does two different things. First of all, it makes the optimization smoother. We have encountered previously that sometimes if we select um, a, or change the parameter of lambda, your result might not immediately converge to the optimal value. That is due to the fact that the derivatives with respect to an absolute value are non-smooth. Whereas if you are talking about the squared values, they indeed are. The second uh, issue that it takes into account is that elastic net regression, uh, unlike lasso, does not set so many uh, coefficients to zero, it shrinks most of them. So you would have less zero coefficients than in the lasso model, and it can be an advantage or a disadvantage depending on the applications. Uh, additionally, uh, there is also a nice relationship between lasso, elastic net, and the ridge regression, a technique that we investigated in one of our previous videos, and that has to do with the alpha value. It has been proven that 
obviously when alpha is equal to 1 it is equivalent to less so as there is no squared error term as there is no squared coefficient term however if if alpha is equal to 0 then the absolute value term disappears and we have got a result that is equivalent to the ridge regression this is a very profound relationship between different regression techniques and how you can think about them as an ensemble of models that can be used under different circumstances or as a continuum of models that you can apply to the same task and compare the results for additional robustness. Now let's move on to the application of elastic net to our task as in the previous video where we investigated lasso we are interested in determining which factors contribute to daily returns of BlackRock, a famous publicly traded investment fund. And we have got four candidate factors, which are S&P 500, treasury bonds, gold and oil, represented by the respective exchange-traded funds or exchange-traded products. We have calculated daily returns of BlackRock, specified a constant by a column of ones, and calculated the daily returns of all four candidate factors. And then we calculate our OLS coefficients using the formula over here. Again, it turns out that the OLS loss function is um, quite straightforward and therefore has a closed form solution that alongside uh, some theoretical considerations uh, facilitates uh, frequent use of OLS in practice. It's very easy to verify where the coefficients come from. They can be quite efficiently calculated using a closed form solution. And for the elastic net, we first simply copy and paste OLS coefficients as values. Then we calculate our predicted values using a matrix multiplication formula that allows us to efficiently calculate all predicted values for all observations, matrix multiplying the uh, matrix of uh, independent variables x, including the constant, by the matrix of coefficients both with regards to OLS and the elastic net. And then we calculate the errors by subtracting our predicted values from the BlackRock returns. And here we calculate the uh, residual sum squared, which is the loss function for our OLS, and the residual sum squared, which is the part of our loss function for our elastic net, as well as the degrees of freedom, which are equal in both cases as they are the number of observations minus the number of coefficients you impose. And then we calculate our errors as the square root of residual sum squared over the degrees of freedom in both cases using the respective values. And now we can move on to optimizing our loss function for the elastic net by using the appropriate penalty term. And we'll see how different it can be to the OLS coefficients with different combinations of lambda and alpha. So let's start with a lambda of 0.02 and an alpha of 0.5. An alpha of 0.5 means that we are conceptually at the midpoint between pure lasso and pure ridge regression. And for the penalty term, we have to multiply our lambda by the sum of absolute coefficients of the elastic net regression times the alpha term. That's the uh, lasso part of our penalty term. And then we add the sum squared of the set coefficients times one minus alpha, which is the ridge regression component of the elastic net. And then we can enforce this formula using shift control enter, get our penalty term at 0 0.03, and calculate our loss as the sum of residual sum squared and the penalty. And then we can look at how our lambda and alpha affect our loss term. For example, if our lambda increases, the loss obviously goes up and the relative importance of the penalty with respect to the residual squared sum increases. So the model would be inclined to be noisier but have lower values of coefficients. And if we reduce our lambda, the uh, penalty term would go down. In terms of the alpha, the relationship is more nuanced. 
Uh, in general, the model would be uh, more lenient if your alpha is lower, so your model is closer to the ridge regression. And it also would be smoother and easier to converge using numerical methods. Let's start with lambda 0.02 and alpha 0.5. Uh, lambda would be equal to our final application in lasso, and uh, alpha is midpoint between pure lasso and pure ridge regression. Let's specify our solver and set the objective that we want to minimize our loss in cell P1275 by changing the elastic net coefficients in the cells I1269 to I1273. We don't need any additional constraints, and we do want some coefficients to potentially be negative, so we untick that and stick with gradient descent. Now we can click solve and see how the coefficients change from our OLS uh, starting point. We see that very similar to what we had in uh, the lasso case, we have uh, our S&P 500 and treasury bonds being significant with the significance of oil returns waning as compared to the uh, OLS regression. Now, if we uh, want to move to a different value of lambda or alpha to improve convergence, speed, and precision, we can move via OLS. So set lambda to zero, go back to OLS parameters, and now we set lambda back to 0.02, we set alpha to 0.75, so closer to pure lasso than pure ridge, click solve, and we see that the coefficients have reduced, bringing them uh, closer to the pure lasso coefficients from the past video. Now we move back via lambda equals zero to improve convergence speed and precision, and set our alpha to 0 0.25 and lambda back to 0 0.02. Now our model is closer to pure ridge than pure lasso. So we can click solve and get our elastic net coefficients now. We see that our oil coefficient uh, still remains uh, slightly negative and uh, this is the closest we are to the ridge. However, our gold coefficient is nevertheless uh, set to zero still. So let's see when does this cease to happen. Again, moving through zero, Set an alpha to a very small amount, like 0.05, and uh, figuring out what would happen that way. We see that in case of alpha equal to 0.05, for this particular lambda, all of our coefficients are non-zeros. And that's what um, elastic net is known for. It allows you to reduce, shrink coefficients without necessarily setting them to zero too much. However, uh, that is not always the case. Uh, elastic net uh, being a combination between uh, two different methods, a weighted average of the two methods, if you wish, does behave similarly to lasso, especially for high values of lambda and alpha. And obviously, uh, the standard errors and uh, hypothesis testing for individual coefficients can be performed on elastic net similarly to the OLS approach with covariance matrices calculated using the general formula, uh, inputting the uh, sigma squared, the standard error of the regression, so that's the variance of the error term uh, in terms of the regression model, and we multiply them by the inverse matrix of transposed x times x. And again, the idea is that the error terms are quite a bit higher for the elastic net than for OLS as we are prioritizing not only reducing the error of the model, but also not uh, being too high on parameter values, uh, reducing the noise. However, uh, sometimes parameter values do increase. For example, in this case, notably, uh, some of the effect of um, gold and oil has been counterweighted by the effect of treasury bonds. That sometimes uh, also happens, meaning that we do capture some of the uh, effect of uh, variables that are correlated with each other by uh, translating this effect into other variables. That is also quite a notable feature of uh, lasso and elastic net models. And that's how you can easily model sophisticated machine learning techniques in Excel. 
Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions for videos on business, finance, or economics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.